All right, welcome back. This is part two of the uh, sort of basics of and uh, getting started with the Confederacy. So we already uh, put together our um, we already put together our core for the uh, uh, our army. Um, you'll notice that we already have some given troops to us, um, but I am also uh, I get to deploy my core. Um, and I'm going to be outnumbered, which is something you're going to have to get used to with the Confederacy. You will be outnumbered in every battle that you fight. Um, depending on the part of the battle, you may not be, um, but you will be outnumbered. Uh, so you're really going to have to make use of your um, outflanking, your tactics, and um, you know, not exposing your men to too much fire and really choosing your battles. So. Uh, let's get into Newport News. So, with Newport News, um, as you kind of saw on the map there, the Union Infantry are going to be coming in um, from these three directions. Um, because we're outnumbered, uh, and because um, I've played this before, really the best position you're going to have is forming around this town. Towns give you much better uh, defense. Um, and cover uh, and if the enemy are going to be assaulting into the stream here again they don't really have that much in terms of cover there uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push my guys back uh, to make it quicker um, and uh, then we'll hit start battle um, I'm gonna move Siegfried down this way Shermer is gonna go into the center of town Kemper will put off this way weed um, nickname is Marijuana and with Stewart here I'm just gonna have him fall back um, pretty straight you'll notice though of course off the bat I have more men than the Union um, which is you know good so I don't necessarily need to fall back any uh, brigade I do encounter would probably um, be weak and they probably only have these those two units here Poe and Bernie um, but there's no reason to overextend yourself I know I will be getting some reinforcements for free um, over here already I have Jeb Stewart here um, the handsome idiot And I'm going to have weed hold there. Um, I want to prevent, uh, if you watch the Union video, I want to prevent a bull run scenario where the enemy surrounds me and is able to flank my units. Um, so you're really going to want to stick tight and uh, guard the flanks of your unit here on the very tip of your U. Um, I'm going to have Stuart here. Uh, one thing you can do with cavalry is you can dismount them um, to kind of use them more as infantry. This will make, um, they can now use cover. So if you want to um, do that, you can. But they also kind of act then as like skirmishers. It's just really up to you. Um, the mobility, of course, is going to be restricted. And so right now we're waiting. Uh, it will be longer than 38 minutes. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, the Confederate campaign is all about saving your men. So if you are in a defensive position and the objective is to hold a town or something like that, then really there's no need for you to go looking for a fight. Now I know that's contrary to everything that Southerners might uh, in the in historical reference, they'll be like, "We got, we want to go whip them Yankees." Um, you're not going to do well. You're going to want to, if you want to beat history, you're going to have to use your brain. Unlike the Southern uh, side did during the Civil War, you're going to have to conserve your men, conserve your equipment, uh, and again, use them wisely. Uh, the Union are the ones that can throw uh, their expendable men uh, at your defenses. 
Uh, you, on the other hand, are going to have to get around and try and save as many men as possible, um, which is why um, when it comes to this, training is going to help, but medicine also is going to help um, you as well. Really, with the Confederacy, um, I mean, politics will help you, so will economy. Um, not so much logistics. Um, you can kind of offset logistics and ultimately... Your men will still be able to fire um, without any ammo, but it just takes them uh, a lot longer to reload and put in effective fire. Um, so, yeah, it's just a, a case of this is the harder campaign, so you're going to have to be smarter um, with your men. One point, uh, like when it comes to your character, you can actually... Um, hold off on army organization you don't get as many uh, as many men to recruit or to use in your armies so there's no need to make your army size that big because you're not going to have any place to put them uh, so if it's going to be better for you to uh, add a point into medicine for example then um, you would be better off doing that than army organization when you can't um, you know fully fill out the extra brigade or the extra core that you might get. Um, so at this point we see that with our reconnaissance skill, um, we're now even. Uh, we outnumber them by 12, uh, but they have guns uh, and we don't. They still haven't shown up. I could send Stuart out on a uh, spotting run. I could also do this and detach my skirmishers. They don't see anything though. So it looks like we're just going to have to wait. Um, and I'm perfectly fine. They're the ones who have to come to me. Um, so, you know, sit back, pitch a tent, and do some camping if, uh, if you need to. So let's speed up time. This is when I could put in the uh, music. Oh, looks like we've... Uh, got some extra friends coming in so now we're outnumbered nearly two to one so this is when um that's going to be a little bit tougher but we do get uh joseph johnston here is it joe or is it albert sydney johnson i think it's albert sydney johnston i don't know everybody's got the same last name um but we do have some extra troops here so we're going to flush out our defense um, and I'm going to move two guys over to the right and two guys over to the left. And then uh, I'm going to move the guns into the center of town um, to help reinforce weed. And I'm going to move Kemper. Uh, Alright, so trade tour we can set up. And it's a little bit even. Uh, I am outnumbered a little bit, but because I'm in a defensive position, you don't need as many men uh, to hold. Um, uh, I'm thinking right now that maybe I'll take Barto and move him over as well. Um, but I think my play is the best play for now. All right, B will be in this cornfield. Uh, Evans ideally would be uh, not in an open field, but uh, it is what it is. Again, I don't really care about these guys because I'm not going to get them back. They are free units to use as I choose. What I am going to do is uh, mount Stuart and uh, send him over actually on the flank. Bartow and Ewell here can go shoot. All right, so now the fun begins. Imidin and Pelham, once they do get set up here, we should start seeing a lot of enemies uh, falling. I don't want to turn weed. I want to keep them uh, stuck in this position. B 
because Wilcox and Bernie might be able to put in flanking fire, and that's not good. Kemper is doing all right. But the morale is falling, and that is not all right. So at this point, what I could do is move Stewart in as sort of a backup, but I think Kemper is, will be able to come back. And now that the guns are all set up, I'm less worried. So you can see them being flanked is not a good thing. I'm going to undo Siegfried so they can help out too. And once Kemper is back, we want to push them back into that position real quickly. So, alright, now I see a problem here. I'm going to hit fall back, and then now that they've stopped charging, I'm going to hit hold, and I want to harass the flank of an enemy. Again, they won't be able to shoot at two things, or two people at once, and now that I've got an extra cavalry unit, that will also help. So I'm just going to have Seward sit here and put in fire onto the flanks um, and try and just do some morale damage there. All right, Kemper's coming back into the town. And Weed is also back already. I don't want my guys running off too much. So you can kind of see where the problem lies when you're trying to defend like a nice uh, a U like this. Um, you do get flanked uh, more than you want to uh, be getting flanked. I'm going to move Stuart around. Now that we're in a little bit more uh, control here, and now that Wilcox here is kind of permanently routing in the water, they're going to die pretty quickly. Um, and now we can see that we outnumber them. Um, they weren't able to capitalize on uh, my uh, unit's routing. Back here, Stuart. I'm going to unblock them so they turn. But I want Kemper to focus on these gentlemen in front. I'm going to get Siegfried's guns in the fight. That will give him experience, but also it's just good, uh, good business, as it were. Jennifer and Stewart here, I'm going to use as flanking fires. This is where your ranged cavalry really thrive, is on the flanks of enemies. Um, if they can put in effective fire without getting shot at, um, they're going to really be able to do a lot of damage. So you can already see Jennifer has 118 kills and Stewart has 90. Um, but if I were to charge them in directly ahead on, then they're going to get outgunned, obviously, because there's not as many of them. I'm going to push Bartow up, though. Um, and I'm going to push the cavalry out to the flank. 
You can see that B did the whole shifting walk thing. So Evans could probably use with a shift over uh, to the left. Imidin and Pelham here. Um, not a part of my uh, unit. But they're doing all right for themselves. With Imbidin killed, I believe their efficiency goes down. And uh, these two brave captains of artillery did all right. Or, well, died and all that. But uh, they died for a good cause. Or the cause, I guess, if you want to be that uh, historically accurate. I'm going to let Weed turn. And now we're really putting the hurt on them. We can see that we've cut out them uh, basically in half. And mostly it's because they've been stuck in rifle range in a, uh, in a stream. And so not only will the cannon fire do well, but also the bullet fire. We can push our cavalry up if we're worried about... Bartow losing a little bit here. Attack orders work really well for cavalry because what do, they'll do is they'll fire and then immediately pull back while they're reloading. So if you just want to hit and run, then you can hit and run there. And so you can see we've pretty much routed the entire force. They only have 3,000 men left. Uh, and we've only lost about 1,000. So uh, not a bad return. And when it comes to our units uh, that we own, um, well, we've already won. So there we go. We've only lost 1,000 men to their four. Um, and uh, not too many of them were our guys. So this early game, again, is about building uh, your troops up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in medicine um, already. Uh, and I'm just probably going to want to focus on these um, for a battle or two. Uh, Army organization will come uh, as well. Uh, actually, with Shiloh, I am going to want uh, a lot of Army organization. Um, so we see that uh, we have a train. So there's two... Uh, things you can do. One is discipline, which is morale and efficiency. Uh, I tend to think of this as a shooting uh, build if you want this unit to be more of a shooter. And then you've got the endurance course, and these guys are going to be more of your like melee course. Um, because if you see as you go down, there's this assault course, which gives you melee bonus. Um, there's a firearms course, which is sort of reload, uh, which is just you know shoot as fast as you can. And then there's a marksman training, which is, you know, shoot accurately. And then there's sharpshooter and elite. And elite is, again, going to be more of your melee style. Uh, and then the sharpshooter is your more shooting style. So this I tend to design um, units based on what weapon they have. So farmer is a more melee build. Um, so I may want them to be more of this endurance course, because if you're charging, you're going to need that stamina. You could do this morale bonus, because you don't want them to route while they're getting uh, charging. Um, really, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to do... Uh, I kind of spread it out evenly. And because I can, uh, I'm just going to rookie them. Uh, and they still maintain their training. With Kemper, I'm going to also do the same thing. Since we captured some of the spring fields, then we can easily replenish our men there. We never used cable, so now we can uh, add a bunch more into. Yes, sir. We can add a full 1500 and only pay a little bit for the extra rifles. And I think what I'm going to do is... Um, you can see that the Springfield isn't too expensive, so I'm going to spend them now. But now uh, I don't have as many Springfields because I'm not, I don't have access to the Union's sort of supply lines. Um, that's okay for now because I was just going to build another uh, an artillery 
uh, brigade anyway using Napoleons. I think they're more expensive uh, on this side uh, than anything. And I'm a weirdo, so I like to do them by twos rather than um, a weird number. It just a little bit of OCD. And uh, we can add some extra supply. But I have some extra men left over, which isn't the uh, worst thing in the world uh, for the Confederacy. Uh, I do have some extra money. Uh, I could, you know, use reputation, but really what I want to do with my reputation is I want to spend this on men. I don't want to spend this mo uh, on um, rifles or people as much. Um, only uh, if I'm, like, strapped for cash will I do that. I could check to see if I need to sell anything. I'm going to keep a hold of Sharps, uh, this Sharps model um, for skirmishers later on or for cavalry later on. It's, you know, dual purpose. And, uh, yeah, so it looks to me like Bull Run is going to be the next thing. Now, if you watch, every time we fight a battle, the Union uh, on Bull Run, since I just played it, got 17,000 men. Uh, to add to their army. We're only going to get 12,900 uh, if we win. So you can see right there that, you know, every battle, I'll just keep saying it in this er, um, in this campaign, every battle is um, going to be about conserving your men, putting them in good positions, um, and making sure that you're not basically wasting them in futile assaults. Um, so basically don't do Pickett's Charge um, every time, which is why uh, I don't necessarily want to charge with the Confederacy as much. Um, that's I know that's like the Rebel Yell and Tally Ho boys over the top, all that stuff, um, but uh, really I kind of want to save my men from uh, getting slaughtered because I'm going to need them uh, eventually later on. Um, and I just don't want to lose them. So um, with that, uh, the next uh, video will be on Bull Run, um, and I'm going to end it here. Um, pretty simple Newport News. It's a defense one. Defending ones uh, are a lot easier. They're less taxing, uh, even if there are some squeaky bum times. But uh, uh, for now, I will see you in the next video.